Hi Facebook, how are you? It's Dr. Emily from the Evidence-Based Fitness Academy. Welcome from Bintan, Indonesia. Don't mind my glasses. I don't think I've ever worn these <laughs> teaching or on Facebook. I'm exhausted. All right, so what we're gonna do is talk about interoception. And this is a side of fascia and fascia fitness, pain, uh, movement correctives that I think is a little bit under appreciated or misunderstood or just not even taken into consideration. So oftentimes when we think about fascia, we think about proprioception. This is something that I talk about a lot. It's actually built into a lot of my cueing, a lot of uh, different movement specialties such as yoga, Pilates, Feldenkrais, dancing are very proprioceptively uh, focused fascial fitness programs. What I want you to do is think about not proprioception, but interoception. This is going to be a different type of receptor that's found within our fascia. It is actually a free nerve ending receptor that is found in your fascia. And similar to proprioception in that it can give you a perception of your body in space. So oftentimes I'll do a lot of cueing as far as um, feeling your pelvic floor, feel the tension of the pelvic floor, feel how that radiates into your deep rotators. We did some of these movements in my workshops when we were just in the MI camp in Bali. That's a very proprioceptively focused cue or um, internal reflection for a client or for a patient. However, interoception would be much more based on like an emotion or heat, uh, a different tingling, arousal, um, satisfaction. So there's, it's a little bit different side of um, a sense of our body. They actually stimulate different parts of the brain. So the proprioceptors stimulate your somatosensory system. So it's, it's managing a lot of motor control. Whereas interoception stimulates via a different pathway, your insular cortex. So two different pathways, which means that sometimes people are will, will have a little bit more focused pathway towards proprioception, and then others will have a little bit heavier focused pathway towards the insular cortex way or the interoception. This is very important when it comes to pain because some patients or some of our clients have a heavy emotion response around pain. That means that they are very much connected via an interoceptive response to that pain. Now, when it comes to proprioceptors, interoceptors, and your fascia, because we're going to be speaking towards movement specialists, is that, it's interesting, is that 80% of the peripheral nerves that are in your fascia are actually free nerve endings. Those free nerve endings, typically when I think of them, I think of pain, so a nociceptor is a free nerve ending, temperature is another free nerve ending, and then interoception is another free nerve ending. Now this free nerve ending, or a C fiber, which is the interoceptor, actually makes up 90% of the free nerve endings in your fascia. So I know that we think of fascia as sensory nerve tissue, often related to proprioception, but now I want you to start thinking about the role of interoception and emotion that is linked to our fascia. Now, way that we can get an idea around this of how interoceptive are you, interoceptively sensitive are you, is I'm gonna base this on a research study, 2012, and I will share that on my Facebook page as well. And what they did is that they found that those who were more interoceptively sensitive were actually more sensitive to pain, which means that they had actually a lower pain tolerance and a lower pain threshold. You could call them a little bit more empathetic beings. They had more of this intuition gut instinct. So they were kind of in touch with this internal side of themselves. Other thing that's interesting is that people who are more interoceptively sensitive actually have a much more sympathetic response. So those who are a little bit more sensitive to it, like a basal vagal reaction are more interoceptively sensitive. So what was done and what we're gonna do, if you wanna join me in this, I did it earlier because I gotta keep track of time, is that what I'm gonna have you do is you're gonna have a seat wherever you are, if you're standing, you can do this later, you can flash back and just see how you do, is take a seat so that you're comfortable. If you wanna pop down and lay down wherever you are, you can totally do that. But what we're gonna do, I'm gonna have you shut your eyes if you want, and you are going to reflect inwards 
and you can't touch anything, so you can't touch where your pulse is. And I'm gonna have you interoceptively, internally count the number of heartbeats that you are sensing internally, and we'll do it for 15 seconds. Then what we'll do is I'll have you take your radial pulse and we'll measure that for 15 seconds, and then we'll do a little bit of a comparison, okay? So set yourself up however you wanna be comfortable. Again, laying back if you would like. I did a, a lotus pose earlier when I was doing it, and you're just sitting nice and relaxed. I'm turning my, my hands up so that I'm not feeling anything. I'm not using any tactile receptors. Just kind of get situated. I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, and then we'll start. You're going to count every heartbeat that you're sensing internally for 15 seconds, starting now. stop. Perfect. So now what I'm going to have you do is you're going to take your index and middle finger and you're going to go right over where your radial pulse is. Please do not use your thumb because, I can't even show you this, your thumb because your thumb has its own pulse. So you want to go over your, near your thumb, you're going to feel for your radial pulse. I'll give you a moment to get situated so that you can feel the pulse. Kind of get into the rhythm of it and just try to keep your, your breath relaxed because if you inhale a lot as you're doing this, it will actually accelerate your heart rate. So nice and relaxed. And then start. And stop. Perfect. So what you want to do is do a comparison. So how many heartbeats did you sense internally? And then how many did you do when you, how many did you feel when you were actually feeling your radial pulse? You want to do a comparison. Based on this research study, 2012, which I will post on my wall, what they saw and the way that they ranked it was those who had a 79% accuracy. So when I did a little bit of an internal, I counted 16 beats. When I actually did it, 18 beats. So which you could say it was a high heart rate, but it's okay. I am always running around. So that's not the point of this little point, um, education here. So anyway, so my accuracy is roughly around 89%. If your accuracy of what you felt to actually had was around or greater than 79%, you are considered internally sensitive high. So you have a high interoception interoception sensitivity. If you were lower than that, you would be technically a low. If you are lower, their markers for their study was 55%, then that would be, you know, a relatively low interoception sensitivity. Now, what this meant is that those who had the 79%, so this is my 89% that I had, were associated with a low pain tolerance. They had a low pain threshold. When they get uh, are stimulated with pain or the idea of pain that will actually have a sympathetic vasal vagal type response. So something that you want to take into consideration with your clients or patients who have or are more interoceptively sensitive. This is something that definitely matches me to a T. I have a very low pain tolerance. I've had several vasal vagals. I get my whole head wrapped up around pain. And even though I'm given injections all day, I'm always surprised that I have a very low pain tolerance. So things that you can take into consideration as a movement specialist is how can you start to integrate or factor in possibly some interoception cues or if you know some of your clients or patients are interoceptively sensitive, can you factor that in when you are about to do an injection, when you're about to do a manipulation, when you start talking about procedures that they might need. If you are um, trying to do correctives for chronic pain that they might be having, um, seeing how you can give different cues outside of just proprioception. Some great research to learn more about this. Again, Robert Schleip, one of my favorite researchers around fascial fitness, has a great article on interoception. Of course, through EBFA, we're going to be talking more and more about interoception through our programming. So I definitely encourage you to learn more. Think about the role of this with your clients and patients. Stay awesome, stay barefoot strong, and I hope you had fun with that little cue. Take care.